Hello, I'm Dr. Ron England, and I'm coming to you here with a lecture, a uh, database lecture on doing stored procedures and how to do cursors and dynamic SQL and stored procedures. So first, what I'm going to start with is a database, and I'm actually going to start with a data dictionary because to do the example I'm going to show you uses what we call basically lookup tables. So here is a data dictionary for a specific database, um, which is actually a government database. And there's a field in this database called division. And it's a coded field. So when there's a zero, it means Puerto Rico. When there's a one, it means New England. And that's what we mean by division codes. Now, this is going to be kind of important to the lecture, not necessarily important to uh, what we're going to do with uh, the cursors and the dynamic SQL. But it is part of the example that I'm going to do. So I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to jump over here to store us. Uh, um, SQL Server and to manage these codes I've got this two tables set up here uh, with codes and categories and when we talk about categories we actually say like the division here would be a category and each of these values here would be a code now if you look at this database you can see like ST that would be state and then 01 would be Alabama so you've got lots of categories and lots of codes. So like ACR, we're going to use ACR. ACR means lot size and it's got one, two, three, four codes, B, one, two, and three. So you can see what this actually means when you have this categories and codes. Now, um, what I would like to do is I would like to create a report that for one category or one field in the database, it shows you the values, number, uh, we can do an aggregation with a sum, but in this case we're just simply going to do a count. It's going to show, it's going to tell you how many values there are for another category. So in other words, I'm filtering on two categories. So I could, and a good example, what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to use two categories. I'm going to use ACR, which is lot size, and I'm going to filter, I'm going to show it for a number of other, for another category here, or another field which is going to be FS, which is Yearly Food Stamp Supplemental Nutritious Assistance Program Recipiency. So yes or no. So I'd like to say for every category of home acreage, how many receive food assistance and how many don't receive food assistance. But they're in two different columns in the database. And I want to do this with a single stored procedure. But what I've done is I've actually put the categories and the codes into this table. So I have a category called FS, and I have a category called ACR, FS being the food stamp, ACR being the acreage. And for each category, I, I have a number of codes. Like for the acreage, I have the, the 1, 2, and 3 codes. And for the FS, I have the 1 and 2, which is yes and no. All right, so let's jump to the actual coding here. So where I'm going to do this. Now first I'm going to show you a little bit of dynamic SQL. So first I'm going to have a query here that I'm showing where I want to count the number of, uh, um, I want to count the number of values for each value of acreage. In other words, the acreage has three different values and I want to count how many entries in the database there are. And this is the query to do that. So if I go ahead and execute this query, I can see this. Now, you can't really see, part of this goes gone off the right of the screen. I'll show you a little trick here. If you right click and you say results to grid, okay, that'll actually send the results. Now I can actually re-execute this. I can send the results to a grid. And there you actually have, um, specifically, in this case, I actually have a query where it counts up how many entries there are for each of the individual acres one, two, and three of the three entries. It counts out how many are there underneath when the FS field, which is FS being food stamps is equal to one, which basically means food stamps equals yes. Okay, that's what this query does. And it's a, it's a straightforward aggregation query. Now, another way to do the query is this. I actually declare a value at S Okay, you should know that that's a variable as an nvarchar 500, and I put the text of the query into the variable 
at s. Then I call this um, command execute at s. So if I do that, and I execute, it does exactly the same thing as we saw in the previous query, but I did it in a different way. This is dynamic SQL. What it allows you to do is create the text of a SQL, and there's multiple ways to do dynamic SQL too, but this creates the text of the SQL and then executes the command that you've put into the text. Now this is going to give us a lot of capability here. So I'm now going to go over and I'm going to describe a stored procedure that I've created and I'm going to call the stored procedure ACR report. And I'm going to send it over one thing, one variable called column category or call category here. Now in this what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare a cursor. Now first let's actually run this and let's show you what happens here. Okay, if I go ahead and execute this with FS, I do execute. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and pull this up so you can see it. It did, it basically ran the query three times. Now, when the food stamp supplemental system was equal to NA, there were no values returned anywhere. When it was equal to yes, it had these values that returned. And notice that these values are for the description of house on less than 10 acres, 10 acres or more, or less than one acre. So the three showed up there. And here's for the food step assistance equals no. And here's the values there. So it ran that query multiple times. That was the query to figure out what the report was multiple times for the different values of yes and no. Now this was all done in a stored procedure. So let's look at that stored procedure. First, what I did was I created a cursor. This is going to be important to you. The dynamic SQL concept is pretty straightforward. You put your SQL into a text and then you execute the text and the SQL gets executed. Okay. Now in this one, a cursor is essentially the results of a query that are put inside of a variable and the variable is called the cursor. So in this case, I'm going to declare this cursor named call cursor and the query is going to be selecting the name and the description from the codes for the category equal call category. Now what, I'm, what I did down here when I called this is I called this with FS. FS is a category, it's also a field in the database. And so I called the stored procedure with that value. So when I do that, all the values that you can have for FS are stored in the database in the codes table. So the value 1, which was yes, and the value 2, which was no, are stored in the codes table of the database. But now I've stored them in the cursor. So what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to loop through and I'm going to run the query that gives you back the report for the value yes and for the value no. The cursor is what's going to do this loop. So now we've declared this cursor. So the concept here is that the cursor is a variable that, that retains the results of a query. Now, to use a cursor, and I'm going to kind of skip over a little bit of the rest of this, um, these declare statements. What I do first is I have to open the cursor. Now, that just means that I can use the cursor. But this statement here is important. Fetch next from call cursor into at call code name and at call code description. Well, if you remember, the cursor returned two fields the name and the description and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the values from the cursor and I'm going to put them into here. Now the fetch next says go when the cursor is open it's actually on row zero. Fetch next means go to the next row and get the values and put them into these variables and that's what I did there. Now I'm going to create now a loop and it's a while loop so if you've done your programming you should know while loops and there's a meta variable called at at fetch status and what that means is if fetch status is not equal to minus one, there's still rows left. When the fetch status gets to the end of all the rows that are in the cursor, it's going to give you back a minus one. So this gives you a pretty easy while to do. You set at, at fetch status not equal to minus one, and then it's a while loop, so it has a beginning and it has an end, and it's going to execute everything inside this while loop while there's still rows left in the cursor that you haven't fetched. Well everything else from here is essentially what I just showed you. Uh, I do a couple of print statements. One is to give 
the category description and the column and category description so you actually know what you're looking at to make it a pretty report. But then if you see here, I've created a string query, a query into a string. The thing is, is that the string query has one thing that's really important down here. I'm doing an aware clause where the table raw data dot call category, that's a field in the table, is equal to this value. Now, if you notice, it looks like there's a whole bot, lot of single quotes. Well, the reason is, is when you create the query and you actually have string values in the query, they've got to be surrounded by single quotes. Well, to put a single quote into a string, when the single quote denotes the string, you have to put two quotes. So two quotes side by side will actually mean that you've got a single quote that's going to be inside the string. Pretty neat. Okay, so I now made this query, okay, where I've actually selected this, and I've used a couple of functions here, like left, I use the left function, and the reason is, is because code's description is 255 characters long, and when you, or 200 characters long, well, when you print that, it prints 200 characters, whether you're only using the first part of the, or, you know, using the whole 200 characters doesn't matter, it prints the whole thing. This left will tell it to only print the leftmost 50. And what it allows me to do is it allows me to like make the report look a little bit a little bit better. Okay. Um, the query was the query that I showed you before and I do have these queries, these specific queries covered, covered in other lectures of how exactly do they work. So you can look at those lectures to see that. But right now the important thing is there's your dynamic SQL. I execute the dynamic SQL in the stored procedure and then the cursor has to fetch the next row. So here's the fetch next. When I'm done fetching all of them, well, which means basically the fetch status is equal to minus one, I close the cursor, I deallocate the memory from the cursor, and I'm done. And that's it. I'll run it one more time here so you can see it. So you can see these results come up, and you can see that for the value of um, an A, okay, there were no no rows in the query for the value of the assistance equals yes, which is this one here. You can see that there are values that you get. And for the assistance equals no, you can see here are some values, the values that you get. And that the query is actually doing a, a grouped query on the acreage. So it's doing, um, it, it's a pretty straightforward query if you're doing aggregation and there are queries that you would need to know for, for doing aggregation. Well, hopefully you were able to follow all the different things that I've done here. Um, this is some really good programming. Once you master the capability of do, doing dynamic SQL and mastering the ability to use cursors, you essentially now can do almost everything that you need to do for manipulation of data using T-SQL and stored procedures. Thank you very much and good programming.